I thank you once again for joining me in this tutorial on how to create 2D animations using the Unity 5 game engine. So let's get started right away. Um, if you are joining me from the previous tutorial, I'm sure you would have created these three folders already. But for those of you who are joining for the first time, uh, in the last tutorial, here's a quick recap. We created three folders, first one for scenes, and we saved our scene as gameplay. And if you haven't done so, please go ahead and save the scene by hitting Command S or clicking the File menu and selecting Save Scene from here, okay? Or you might want to save scene as for the first time. Make sure that you're going to save the scene in the Scenes folder. And then we created an Animations folder. And then we went ahead and created two animations in the last tutorial, the Idle and the Running animation. And I encouraged you to create the walking animation yourself. And uh, don't worry if you've not been able to create the walking animation yourself. Uh, the process was very simple. All you had to do was you had to go to your sprites folder. And uh, you had to look for all the sprites with the walk keyword. Okay. Uh, hold down shift. Select all the sprites. Drag and drop them right here inside the, the scene panels. Okay. And uh, once you've done that, Unity would have created two things for you. One, an icon like this. This would represent your animation and an animator controller. Okay, so uh, in that case, what I would have encouraged you to do was delete the animator controller created for you because by standard convention, you required only one animator controller. And then I, I also shared a bit about what, what the animator controller does for you. It helps you switch between different animation states, okay? A game object in video games, a game object can be anything. It can be a player, your enemy, a bullet, you know, things like that. Things which interact with one another or sort of your background images, clouds moving, stuff like that, okay? These are called game objects in Unity and these game objects have something called components. How can you see the components you need to select the game object in the hierarchy panel. Once you do that, please look inside the inspector panel and you would notice that you have things like these, these boxes with the divisions here, okay, this line right here. So these two things with these down arrows and their titles, these are components, okay? So every game object in Unity has these components and by standard convention, it's it's the transform component which is attached with every game object and then when you do some animations or you create an animation there would be an animator component attached to your game object and this animator component has a controller okay and that's the same controller which Unity creates for you when you create your animation for the first time in our case since we have a cat and we created the cat animator controller so that's what you see here and I'm also in this tutorial going to show you what the animator panel does for you, how you can do some scripting to change between these boxes or animation states technically. These boxes are animation states and how you can switch between these states. Now, um, so yeah, let's get started right away. I mean, um, I think uh, it's all very easy once you start getting used to it. Initially, if this is the first time you're doing animation in Unity 5, all of this might look a little confusing to you. You know, these boxes, these arrows, and all of this, you know, it looks a little complicated. But trust me, once you start getting used to it, and once you have your basic concepts in place, it's going to be very easy. Okay, so here in this tutorial, we have a game object. It's a cat, and as you can see here in the inspector panel, the cat has an animator component with a controller, cat. So it is this cat controller, which you can see here in this animator panel, okay? This is how the cat animator controller looks like, okay? It's the visual representation of the cat animator controller. Now, the first challenge of learning video game programming or any programming concept or anything technical in nature is that the technical terms sound confusing animator controller transitions animations or you know layers you know parameters things like these so it's my effort to to associate these terms with things you already know so 
in this tutorial, we're going to refer to this as boxes, okay, for the sake of simplicity. But if you want to know the technical uh, lingo for this, th these are states. And states, when you highlight one of these, okay, when you click on it, a blue border appears. This means it's highlighted. And then you can look in the inspector panel and you would notice the properties associated with a particular animation state. So this state or this box is called running here. For now, let's have a look at the rest of the properties which are important for this tutorial. The first one is motion, this guy, okay? Now, the confusing part is motion, but this really should have been animation because this represents an animation. And now here's the important thing. This box is not exactly the animation. This is a holder, a box. The reason I call it a box is because you can actually place an animation inside this box, okay? If you delete this box, okay, if I s delete this running box, it's not going to remove the running animation that you created. If you look in the animations folder, you have this running animation, right? So if you delete this, you're not going to delete this. So don't worry about experimenting with these boxes. For example, if you accidentally delete this, your animation will still be there in the animations folder right here. Okay, so this is just a box, it's a holder. And then what are these arrows? Okay, in technical terms, these are transitions. But in simpler terms, these arrows represent changes from one box to the other box. And the direction of the arrow shows you from where to where is this change taking place. Now, let's highlight an arrow. Okay, and once you highlight an arrow, the function of the inspector panel is to show you all the properties associated with the item that's highlighted. Okay, in this case, we have highlighted the arrow. So here are the properties of the arrow. Now, let's have a look at the first one. Now, here's the arrow. Here's the arrow head. Okay, the arrow head is pointing from walking to idle. This means this transition is from the walking animation state to the idle animation state. So that's the first thing you need to understand or keep in mind. So if I ask you what this transition represents, okay, is it from running to idle or is it from entry to idle or is it from walking to running? How would you know that? Okay, there are two ways of doing that. You look closely and see where the arrowhead is pointing or the simpler way that I use is I highlight an arrow and I look in the inspector panel and here's the clue. Okay, the arrowhead right here is pointing from walking to running. So I know that this transition represents a change from the walking state to the running state. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. The second thing, transitions can be solo or can be mute. Okay, what, what do you mean by these? So for now, uh, you don't have to worry about it because these are primarily used for debugging purposes, for testing. Once you get comfortable with the basic concepts on how to create transitions and switch between the states, um, you might come across certain bugs. Some animation is not playing correctly. And that's when we will come back here and use the solo and mute, okay? But as the name suggests, solo means when you check this, this animation will play on its own. It's not going to be uh, dependent on other animations. And mute means you're going to stop this animation transition altogether. It's not going to work. So if you if you are testing between many animations, so you can mute a certain transition and it's not going to take place and you can eff effectively debug your problem. Okay, um, and before I explain the has exit time option and the rest of the settings here and this visual graph and these things here, I want you to see something, okay? Because it's going to help you uh, understand what's going on. So let's hit the play button here or hit command P or control P uh, depending on the machines you're using and Let's have a look at what's going on, okay? When you hit the play button, Unity initializes all of the components attached with the game objects. And since this cat game object has an animator component, which has the controller, the animator controller here. If you look inside the animator panel, okay? This is the visual representation of this controller here, the cat controller. This is how it looks like. It's got a couple of boxes which are connected with these arrows and these arrows are called transitions and the boxes are called animation states okay by default you have a green box or a green animation state which is the first box 
which Unity will activate or call when you start the game or when you hit the play button. And then this guy here, the entry box has an arrow pointing towards the idle animation state, okay? And since this box here, the idle animation state is orange in color, this is the default animation state. If you remember, any box that you turn orange by highlighting it and selecting set as layer default state becomes orange and then becomes the default animation state. So remember, as a rule of thumb, the green box will always point to the orange box and then from there on you can create these arrows and create your animation cycle. All right, now what's going on here? Um, if you look, the idle animation state has a progress bar. This blue guy here, you know, this is moving from here to here and it keeps looping over and over again, right? So what's that? What's happening here? So effectively what's happening is Unity, when you hit the play button, it initialized all of these components, okay? First it went into the hierarchy panel, it looked at all the game objects, and then it started initializing all the components. You know, these are all components, right? So Unity started initializing or started to prepare all these components. Since this cat game object has the animator component, which has the controller, okay? So Unity said, okay, what's gonna happen is, since you have an animator component, which has a controller, cat, um, let's look at it, and Unity came into this uh, this uh, scenario, and it, it, it saw that there's a green box, and Unity said, okay, let's see where the green box is pointing. And since there's an arrow into this orange box, the idle, Unity started playing the idle animation, okay? The reason you have this looping going on is because when you create an animation for the first time, by default, the animation is going to loop over and over again. So is there a way of changing the loop? All right, that's a good question. And yes, you can do that. How do you do that? There are two ways of looking at it. The first way is you can, uh, first let's stop the animation, okay? And let's go into the project panel in the animations folder and let's have a look at your idle animation, okay? When you highlight it in the inspector panel, and uh, it's got this loop time property. So, and it's got a check here. And that's the reason why the animation was playing over and over and over again, okay? So if you remove a check from here and you try to play this another time, you'd notice that the animation plays only one time and it's not looping anymore. Although you see this progress bar going over and over and over again, but because the animation did not have a loop time enabled, so it's not looping. Now, the reason why I shared this with you is, as you grow your Unity game programming skills, you might wanna create an endless runner kind of game, right? And that's when you'll notice that there are a couple of animations that you don't wanna loop, okay? For example, if this cat was running, maybe it hit an obstacle and it falls down. So if the animation, falling animation, has this loop time checked, so the, it, it's going to keep playing over and over again until a certain condition is met, right? You don't want that to happen, right? So that's when the loop time comes into action. It helps you play the animation one time and then you can move on to other animations. Say this cat hits an obstacle, it falls down, and maybe you can restart the game or you can show some other animation, okay? So that's when you're gonna use this. For now, let's stop the animation and let's look at the second way of reaching it. I'm going to turn this loop time on. We're going to go back to the animator. And when you highlight the idle animation state, because this is a box, so the first time you select it, you're going to see these properties. But since you also have the idle animation, click it one more time. Okay, it's like a double click. And when you do that, you reach the properties of the animation clip associated with this. And there you go, you have a loop time. So how we did that was, let's come back from it. You double click this, and there you go. You reach the properties of the animation clip, and here's the loop time. So you wanna turn this off, and then now when you play the animation, or when you hit the play button, it's going to play only one time, and that's it. So, okay, so this was important. Now we're gonna go back, we're gonna select this. You might wanna use any of the way that I showed you, whichever way feels more comfortable and natural for you, okay? I idly like to double click and do it this way, 
but feel free to use or choose any of the uh, methods that seem natural for you. Okay, so now let's move on to an important part of this entire process. How can you change from one state to the other state, okay? And technically, how can you transition from an animation state to the other animation states, okay? And in Unity, you do that using scripts. So Unity offers you three scripting languages. The first one is C-sharp, then you have JavaScript, and you have Boo. And uh, all out of these three, C-sharp is the most popular. And if you're beginning Unity programming, um, that's my recommendation also to take a look at C-sharp because uh, most of the assets on the Unity asset store are developed using C-sharp. It's got a great community support and there are a lot of great tutorials and and yeah, so uh, this tutorial we're going to be focusing on C-sharp. So you can use scripting to kind of create the conditions where the changes will take place. Now, so the rule of thumb is anytime you want an animation state to change, you have to create a certain condition. And I think this is just the right moment for me to introduce you to the concepts of conditions, okay? And uh, before I do that, I want you to see something. Um, how you get to conditions and where can you change them, all right? So click on any of these arrows and these arrows will show you the, the properties here in the inspector panel. And this is where you can see conditions. These are conditions. It's a sort of box where you start creating conditions. Now, how you create conditions is, I've already created one for you, okay? How you do that is there's this plus sign when you click this, all right, let's just do this. And here, you have this sort of thing where you have this drop down, you have a text box here, and you, you can have a value here. All right, so what are these conditions? Now, as in real life, when you want to get something done, you might want to go through a certain condition, okay? If I don't want to get wet, I would like to take an umbrella. So the condition is you don't want to get wet. So what do you do? You take an umbrella. So in computer programming, conditions are a very important part of the entire programming experience. So like I said, the rule of thumb is when you want to change from one animation state to the other animation state, you have to create conditions. And the moment the condition is satisfied, the change will happen. Okay, so to understand this better, um, let's have a look here inside this panel. Okay, this is the parameters panel. Okay, in the animator panel, you have two panels here, layers and parameters. Layers is a little more advanced, so we will touch it in the other tutorial. For now, let's look at parameters, and parameters are variables where you get to store values. And what are variables? Variables in computer science are locations, or they're just like boxes inside the computer's memory. And you can put a label on these boxes that a certain variable or a certain box is going to hold a value of a certain type. For example, in Unity, you can create variables and place these four kind of labels on them, all right? These labels will tell that this particular box or this particular variable can take values of a certain type. You might have a label called float, integer, that's INT, stands for integer, and you have bool, boolean, and you have trigger. Triggers are also special conditions. So I created a variable called state. I named it state. I can, you know, sort of change the name from here, all right? But I call it state, and I'll show you. It's, it's a good way of creating your animation loop or animation cycle here, or this kind of uh, configuration. So I call it state, and then, and maybe let's give you a clue from here. So let's hit Command-P on Macintosh or Control-P, or you can click the play button and see what's going on. And now let's have a look at what's, what, what's going to happen, okay? In this variable, I'm going to change the value. I'm going to change this to one. And there you go. Did you see that? The whole thing changed. The idle animation stopped playing and now the walking animation is playing. So, did you get the clue? Okay, one more time, I'm going to change this to two now. Oh, there you go, this guy started running now. And the walking animation changed from walking to running. So what's going on? So, 
is it that you can change values here in this variable and that will effectively change the animation that this guy is playing? Exactly, that's the whole process. So you got it. All right, so manually, the change from one state, one animation state to the other state happens when a condition is met, right? And where are these conditions? All right, these conditions are stored in these arrows. These arrows are called transitions. Now, if you look, when you highlight a certain arrow, there's this condition, right? And here's the variable. Okay, now, this condition states that, or it says that, when the state will be equal to 1, right? And that's when the idle will go to the walking animation. Let's change this to 1 and see if it's actually true. I changed this to 1, and hey, this guy started walking, so it's true. I mean, first let's bring it back to zero okay this guy is in the idle animation right zero represents idle okay and these are values that I have created you can create anything you can have 100 here or 101 or any any number that you want to represent idle any number to represent walking any number to represent running okay but once you have these numbers in place the moment you switch to that number the animation state will change okay I assigned zero to idle. So as long as you have this number zero here, the idle animation will continue to play. And I assigned one to walking. So if I change this to one, there you go, this guy starts walking. The switch happened, all right? So let's look at the switch. The switch is this arrow, the transition, which has a condition. And the condition is that the moment the state equals one, start playing the walking and animation and that's exactly what's happening all right so now let's look at this arrow here the transition for example if you want to change the walking animation to running animation what do you do okay so here's how you figure it out you see the arrow okay which arrow points from walking to running is it this arrow or is this arrow i guess it's this arrow right how do you know that the the arrowhead is going to give you the clue you know from walking to running here's the arrowhead and this arrow is going to have the conditions parameter and in this condition you have a variable state which says that the moment the state will equals to the unity is going to change the animation from walking to running so will that happen we'll see in just a couple of seconds let's change it to two and there we go so yeah that that's exactly how it happens this guy started running the moment the condition was met the condition was if the animation state or if the state variable equals two, the animation should change from walking to running. So now you've actually witnessed the entire manual process of how animation states are changed from one state to the other state. They're actually based on conditions, okay? And how you create these conditions is you create a variable from here, you go to the parameters panel, you would, if you're doing this for the first time, this will be empty. What you need to do is create, um, first let's stop this. You would need to click this plus sign and create a, a integer variable, okay? You can create a float, bool, and trigger, but I will tackle them once you start doing games, okay? Um, I plan to make some series on creating games. So I'll show you in depth how the other ones are created. For now, let's look at an integer, okay? You would have something like this, which you can name anything, maybe a state. Okay, and there you go. Now you can change values from here. And when you click a particular arrow, okay, you would have this conditions. And so you can add a condition like this. And from the drop down, you would you would want to choose which condition or which variable would you want to work with. Okay. Since you just created one variable here and you want to work with it, you can choose that from here. Okay. And you can say that the moment this state zero is equals to something anything that's that's your call let's say 100 okay what you want to do is you want to change the idle to walking so will that happen all right we're going to see that okay we're going to hit the play button and this time instead of changing the state here we're going to change it here because there is a condition that the moment this state zero equals to 100 the idle animation should change to walking animation. Let's see if that happens. 100 and, ooh, 
it did not happen. Now, why is that? I mean, it should have happened, right? Okay, here's the reason. The reason is when you have two conditions, right? And they are listed here together, okay? Both the conditions must be true, all right? So it's not just one condition uh, that if one condition is true for this animation to take place. So for example, if I change this to one, now this guy starts walking. So this was an introduction to multiple conditions. But for the sake of simplicity, because you know in complex games, you will come across uh, scenarios where you would have to deal with uh, or you would want to create multiple conditions. Uh, like if the player is jumping and the player is alive. All right, two conditions. Then you switch the animation state. So something like that. So for now, let's stop this animation. Let's go back to this variable. You can hit the command delete and this is going to delete this state. Okay, and you're gonna go to this guy and you wanna delete this condition by hitting this uh, minus sign. That's it. So for now, we have one condition and uh, let's clear this console. So for now, we have one condition, okay, which is state equals one will trigger the change from idle to walking. And this guy here has a condition that state equals two is going to cause change from walking to running. And that's about it. And so here's here's an exercise for you. If you if I ask you, to, how can you get this guy from running to idle, right? You have from walking to running, you have an arrow from walking to running, you have an arrow from idle to walking, and you also have an arrow from running to idle, right? You can see this arrow. It's pointing from running to idle here, running to idle, right? Now, I've already done that. For example, if I did not have this here, okay, there. Now, on what condition will running come back to idle? Well, the conditions are not here. It's empty. So this is an exercise for you. And, uh, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, it's going to be a lot of scripting in the next video. This was an introduction. I know it was a big introduction. However, it was very important. The objective of my tutorials is to give you a solid background about the entire process so that once you get into games, you know exactly what to do. You know where to go, what not to do, and you're very comfortable with the basics. And you can build on the more complex and the more uh, challenging tasks you can take them on with confidence okay so now I end this tutorial and uh, I'm going to show you the scripting part in the next tutorial it's going to be a lot of scripting so uh, I hope that you've had a chance to see the manual process and now you understand what these arrows are what these boxes are what do these boxes contain these animation clips and um, what do you mean by these uh, parameters how do you create these parameters Okay, you must have seen the types of values you can put into these parameters and uh, how you change values in these parameters and then ca that causes the animation states to change from one state to the other state. And then when you click on these arrows, you see these conditions and what kind of conditions you can have and how can you assign values and then cause the states to change. All right, this was the manual process. And in the next tutorial, you'll do this using scripting. But how do you actually create these arrows? And well, it's very simple. All you need to do is, uh, let me demonstrate using this particular arrow. First, I'm going to delete it by hitting Command Delete or just to delete on Windows. And it says, delete selected asset. And I said, yes. Now, to create an arrow, arrow, as I told you, it's a representative or it is a change from one state to the other state, right? And I'm sure by now, by the end of this tutorial, you are comfortable with the idea of these boxes as being animation states. So if I say that an arrow is a change from one animation state to the other animation state, an arrow is a transition, means we're going to create a transition now and transition from a walking to the running animation state. Here's how you do it you'd need to decide that from where to where will your transition takes place, okay? The direction, the starting direction and the ending direction. So in this case, you wanna create a transition from the walking animation state to the running animation state. So 
what we're going to do is we will first highlight the walking animation state. So we will highlight it. It's, it'll get the blue border and then we right click on this. And once you do that, you have this option, make transition, select this and you're going to get this kind of a, a wire sort of thing, you know, an arrow, which you can kind of drag and drop onto the running animation box. And there you go. You've created your first transition. <laughs> okay. I like to call it simple because essentially the more you start getting used to the process, you would notice that these things are really simple. And uh, essentially the entire programming experience with Unity is made up of these small things that you practice over and over again and you get better and better with them. And there would be a time when you will, this would become second nature to you. So I leave this as an exercise for you to create these transitions. You see this kind of a configuration here, right? We have so many arrows and these arrows have these conditions, right? I would encourage you to first have a look at the entire tutorial and look at this configuration, okay? And then I would encourage you to do these transitions yourself. I showed you how to do one right now. And uh, the way to add conditions is you highlight a particular transition or an arrow. And then when you get down to this conditions box here, you would have the list is empty message. Um, you would need to click the plus and you get your first, uh, essentially the conditions, all right? And from here, you would need to select a particular variable that you would have created here. A parameter or variable, it would appear inside this drop down list. And then you would have a couple of options here. So for this tutorial, you need to select equals, okay? For our condition, we need to have a variable equals a certain value and um, it's up to you to decide uh, what would be the the value of a certain variable for it to have the change take place so in this case I decided to call it two means anytime the value of the variable state is equal to two I want you to do a, a change the animation from walking to running all right, so it's as simple as that. So I'm going to leave this tutorial. I'm going to delete this, okay? And uh, well, that's an exercise for you to go ahead and create this transition. And uh, well, that's about it. So I thank you so much for your patience. And I really wanna thank you for all the wonderful comments you've sent in for the first tutorial. So I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you so much for your support. And uh, so I look forward to working with you in the next tutorial and doing a lot of scripting using C Sharp. So till then, I wish you a wonderful time with Unity 5 and happy video gaming.